scripture reading for this morning comes from uh, Psalm 127, verses 1 and 2. And this is the reading of the Lord. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go to, late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil, for he gives sleep to his beloved. This is the word of God for the people of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in this time of word, Lord, and we just lift it all up to you. Lord, we ask you uh, to just allow this time to uh, strengthen our faith, uh, our resolve, and also, Lord, to give us a vision to see your righteousness and uh, to have hope in our lives and in this world as we proclaim your love and your grace. Use only your words here today, Lord, and not my own. In Jesus' name, amen. What I just read for you was uh, the first part or the first stanza of uh, Psalm 127, and this is one of only... Uh, two psalms that is credited or attributed to King Solomon. And King Solomon, of course, was the uh, son of King David, and he ascended to Israel's throne at a very young age. Some scholars think that he ascended to the throne as young as 20 years old. And Solomon, even though he was young, he was a very wise man for his age, uh, he most likely had a uh, very stressful childhood dealing with all the troubles that were brought upon him by the indiscretions of his father David, which led to a lot of unrest in the land and war and even death of his own brother Absalom. Uh, David, for all of the great things about him, uh, was a man that was uh, possessed with, I guess you could say, some uh, sins or evils in his life, and his children bore the brunt of many of those sins. And so because of this, Solomon was a man who had to grow up fast. He was a man who grew wise before his years, uh, probably growing up fairly quickly, he gained this great wisdom. Uh, he's even credited with writing uh, the entire book of Proverbs, uh, which is nothing but wisdom statements about how you are to live your life. Uh, during his lifetime, his uh, fame as a man of wisdom spread far and wide. Uh, leaders came from all over to hear him speak. Uh, even the Queen of Sheba came to hear him, and when the Queen of Sheba came to test his wisdom, he answered all of her questions, it, say, it says, with ease. Uh, when she saw his kingdom and the vastness of his knowledge, uh, she confessed that uh, she had underestimated this man, and he truly was a very wise man. Early on in Solomon's 40-year reign, there was uh, great material and spiritual growth in Israel. Solomon was responsible for uh, many gains. He had organized many treaties with other nations, uh, for trade of commercial goods, which led to great wealth for Solomon and also uh, the kingdom. But what Solomon is most famous for is the construction of the temple. Uh, and this construction of this temple was a monumental feat in Israel. Some believe that the workforce to construct this uh, was at least 30,000 men who were employed to cut timber 80,000 men to cut stone, and 70,000 men as laborers and supervisors and filling in all the other gaps. It took seven years to build, and it was known the world over for its elaborate craftsmanship and its immense beauty. It was just this huge undertaking for all that were involved. And when I read this psalm, or the beginning of this psalm, I can't help but think that maybe Solomon was looking out at the temple's construction when he pens this psalm. Uh, the first verse of the psalm has this sort of construction theme, right? Unless the Lord builds the house, 
those who build it labor in vain. Maybe as he's writing this, he also sees uh, all the time and the effort it's taking to build. And maybe he's even getting caught up in all the hoopla and excitement that must be surrounded uh, its con or around its construction. But then again, Solomon was so wise, and uh, he sees the enormity of this undertaking, but he also, in the midst of it, he understands or he sees it as maybe a futile endeavor uh, if it's not done in the right way or if it's not done for the right reasons. Meaning, unless the Lord builds the foundation of everything, the nation, this temple, the office of king, the family, unless the Lord builds everything, it is futile. Everything we do here on this earth means nothing and will eventually crumble if we are not building it with God. Solomon was so wise, wise man. I feel that this psalm has a distinct, maybe prophetic uh, word for us Christians, for us American Christians, maybe especially, because we live in a culture that uh, values achievement. We value success, where a person's value is judged uh, by his or her commitment to how much they produce in life. But this psalm says to us that true achievement is only gained in how much you build your life on God. Whatever house you are building, whether it is a family or a career or a community or a church, whatever house you build, it is only successful in the end if it has God behind it or for godly wisdom behind it. It doesn't make a difference how much energy we use to toil in it. It doesn't make a difference if we find ways to squeeze more time out of the each day. It doesn't make a difference if we start our day before the sun rises. God must always be the beginning, the middle, and the end of the lives that we build. And oh, how I wish I had learned this lesson early in my life. I almost died. I mean, I literally almost died trying to gain more and more, not giving a care in the world to how God fit into all of that. You know, when you think back on moments of your life, you know those moments you can think back to and they just kind of make you cringe because you can't stand what you were like back then? Well, sometimes when I think back to the way I was when I was younger, I think that. I honestly do wish that I had been a better example of a man that put God first uh, when my sons were small. You know, you wonder how much you hurt them uh, in their lives of faith uh, because uh, you weren't the example that maybe you should have been. And you try to make up for it years later uh, but it's not long before you realize that uh, maybe the foundations that you set when they were young are hard lessons to relearn when they're older. I wish I had that Solomon wisdom, I guess what I'm saying. I wish I had that Solomon wisdom when I was young. Uh, what I'm about to say are all things that I've been guilty of, so I'm going to say them. Let me just give uh, you all some Solomon wisdom or Solomon wisdom to those building families. Wisdom that goes out to the workaholic parent who thinks that they are sacrificing their time for their family to provide, when providing means the ability to provide every single material thing that the family wants. Not what the family needs, but what the family wants. Or the parents that allow their children to be raised 12 hours a day on social media, or the parent that is too worn out at the end of the day to pray with their children when they tuck them in at night, or the parent that feels too comfortable, uncomfortable to pray in front of their children, or the husband or the wife that's too prideful to get too caught up in their own need for receiving respect that they refuse to say the words, I am sorry, or to let uh, argument end with them, or the parent that sees God in church is 
just an optional activity, just another activity that you do in your day. And this doesn't just mean for parents and families and couples. This psalm is also for every individual. So to the individual that chases nothing but material gain, you know the one that dies with the most toys wins. You ever hear that one? That parent or that person. Or since I'm a grandfather, I say this to my own children. Take this from Solomon's wisdom. Unless the Lord builds the house, those who build it labor in vain. Unless the Lord guards the city, the guard keeps watch in vain. It is in vain that you rise up early and go late to rest, eating the bread of anxious toil. Without God, it is so easy for our guards to go down and our gates of our house to be open to all kind of worldly things. Things that will cause our houses to just crumble away. And that last part, your house just crumbling away. You know who knew that better than anyone? Solomon. Because even King Solomon didn't listen to his own wise wisdom. Near the end of his life, he had somehow lost the wisdom of his youth and he stopped putting God first and he let things trickle into his own house that caused, him his, own, that caused his own destruction. The book of Ecclesiastes, if you uh, ever want to read it, is really all about how the This world's wise man had become a pathetic figure in his old age. Because of Solomon's trade agreements with other nations, a large number of foreign, pagan, believing uh, women became a part of Solomon's court. Solomon allowed them to practice their pagan religions. Uh, These women placed influence upon him and uh, placed demands upon him, so much so that his own faith was completely weakened. And he found himself a little more and more buying into the practices of these other religions. That's how it starts, you know. It's just a little sin into your house, just a little bit at a time into your life. And then it grows and it grows and it grows until it's tearing apart everything that you have built. That's what happened to Solomon. Solomon's participation in these acts set a demoralizing example for the nation of Israel. This plus bad decisions of heavy taxation placed upon the people brought much unrest and rebellion to the land. Eventually, one of Solomon's own servants, Jeroboam, led a successful rebellion against Solomon's son, Rehoboam, after Rehoboam ascended to the throne. The result of this rebellion led to the division of the kingdom, division of the Solomon kingdom that he had built. It led, it broke it right in two. The foundation of all of Israel was broken in two, into two separate nations, the southern kingdom of Judah and the northern kingdom of Israel. Solomon stopped putting God at the gates and his house crumbled because of it. It's a wise story for all of us. Another and final thing that we must consider with this psalm, as members of this church, we must never forget, as with the Temple of Solomon's time, that it is God who builds the church here. Considerable work is required by all of us who love and keep this church each day, but we must not get lost in it all. We must make sure that God and God's ways are always the central focus of all that we do. And I'm not just talking about on Sunday morning. God needs to be first in our Bible studies, in our family ministries, in our preschools, in our dinners that we Uh, give to the community, in our rummage sale, in our meetings, and even in the planning of all of these activities. If we are not putting God first, if we are not working for God's purposes with all of our toil, if we are not reflecting the love of God, the forgiveness, the kindness, but also the courage and the strength 
and the wisdom that honor God in all that we say and do in this church, then we labor in vain too. And God will not bless this place. So we as a church must also hear the wisdom of Solomon. Unless the Lord builds the church, those who build it will labor in vain. Or we too will end up like Solomon, broken, divided, and crumbling. Glory be to the Lord our God, Jesus the Christ. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you in this time, Lord, and we lift it all up to you. And we know, Lord, that you are the foundation of everything that we are. And we ask you, Lord, to always set our spirits, our hearts, always set our minds, Lord, to always be in line with your spirit in all that we do as a people, as individuals, as a church community, and as those that are building our family. Let us always build our foundations with you as the mortar and the stone. In Jesus' name, 